Good evening. Tonight is the one week mark since the Alaskan Way Viaduct in Seattle closed forever. We now have two weeks to go before the new State Route 99 tunnel opens. And today we got a new look at the progress workers are making. King 5's Glenn Farley joins us live. Glenn, so far so good? So far so good. Obviously we're getting a little bit of rain right now. We probably will keep going rain. We'll have more on the forecast here in a minute. But let me tell you there is a lot of change just in the last seven days. It has moved very quickly. I want to go to a picture from up above from Sky King looking down here. This is the South Portal area and there's this major ramp down here that you've driven through many times if you've used Highway 99 and the viaduct at all and filling in those gaps where you were driving through is what this is all about. You can see the southern, the northbound lanes, which are at the southern end of this bridge, where all these big styrofoam blocks are. That's under the work now, three shifts a day to get all of this done. Inside the construction zone, crews are setting rebar. There's already one pour of concrete below this one. Big deal, you ask? Well, this is what that same spot looked like just a week ago. This gap you've been driving through southbound when the viaduct was still open, now filled in. This is the final pavement that we're putting down uh, later today and tomorrow uh, after the rebar's placed. Dave Sowers is the project's deputy administrator and met us again as we stood in the middle of what is the northbound off-ramp that will carry traffic to the stadiums from Highway 99 and the street it connects up to a new stretch of Dearborn paved on Wednesday. And the partial ramp demolition to make room for Dearborn, that happened just last weekend. We consider the work that has happened over the last week to be on schedule. We're hitting all of our milestones. Remember, there are two ends to connect up to the tunnel. This is the south end with the most work, but things are also happening up north too, near Lake Union. We were here last Friday with Dave Sowers. Behind me, this uh, black geotextile wrapped wall is a temporary wall that will be removed. The roadway, the permanent roadway that we stand on right here, actually extends underneath that uh, temporary embankment. So all of that uh, material, that earth, that dirt will come out. That wall built of dirt filled bags was holding up a chunk of the northbound Highway 99 lanes into the old Battery Street Tunnel. Today there's little left of it as a backhoe finishes up loading truckload after truckload. So why is this construction happening so fast? Good weather is helping, but when it comes to building things, the secret at the south end seems to be these giant styrofoam blocks called geofoam. They weigh a lot less than dirt, and while a bit more expensive, can be paved over within days. You just have to wrestle the blocks into place, and they don't settle like soil. If they had to use dirt here. This closure would have lasted probably about six months instead of three weeks. One of the reasons why they use those blocks here at this end of the tunnel project is because the soil here really isn't all that great and the blocks are considered a very stabilized thing. They've been using them on all of these roads now for the better part of the last 10 years or so. So, so far so good, although they're on track for the February 4th opening, getting this bridge open is going to take probably another week beyond that. Live in Seattle, Glenn Farley, King 5 News. So, Glenn, what could the weather have to do with the schedule? Could bad weather equals a mess schedule-wise? Bad weather could. Let's not forget it's January, and let's not forget how fabulous the weather was a week ago tonight when people were trying to say their last goodbyes onto the viaduct, which created kind of a problem for the folks trying to shut it down. Uh, basically, while it's kind of miserable standing out here in this rain right now, um, this is really not a problem for building the blocks, for pouring the concrete, because it's fairly warm. The one thing that really kind of rattles them is if we get extended freezing temperatures, 32 and below, particularly those upper 20s for an extended period of time, like 24, 36 hours, not just a few hours overnight. That's the one worry. So far, so good. This stuff tonight, not a big deal for the contractor. Okay, Glenn Farley, thank you.
about done with our first full week without the Alaskan Wave Viator. Stephen Kilbride standing by with how traffic is doing tonight. Stephen. And it's real interesting seeing Glenn's reports all week long as the progress, and it's fun to be able to watch that along. It's amazing all the work that they're doing. And Mark, we do have a few problems tonight I want to warn people about. One is an accident on Highway 99 Aurora Avenue. As uh, we make your way near 85th, an accident with a Metro bus there occurred. You can see traffic is getting a little bit better in the scene, which is good news, but still 99 better than I-5. As you can see, I-5 is just a mess as you go uh, from south of Shoreline down across uh, the Ship Canal Bridge and into downtown Seattle. Tacoma traffic, pretty brutal as well. That's because there's a lot of rain falling in that area right now. As uh, we take a look at this at I-5 at Yakima, you can see some slow traffic both directions of I-5. And here's another shot at uh, 84th, and this is where you can see uh, the sheen on the roadway and all of the spray coming from the people's back tires as well. So pretty tough there. And the weather overlay, we put that here, and uh, Jordan's going to talk about it in a few seconds, but it's certainly a pretty uh, heavy rain down there in the Tacoma area. Now we take a focused look at the downtown Seattle streets now, and you can see a little bit better. If you remember yesterday at this time, it was really tough on the streets getting out of Seattle. Uh, it looks tough now with all of the red, but there was a lot more red yesterday, which is good. Maybe people got an earlier start today. Maybe uh, they did some other kinds of commuting, but Friday afternoon, at least in the city, usually should be better. It's those uh, far end of stretches of things like Everett and Tacoma that should be worse. Seattle DOT put this out. If you have uh, plans to go to the events this weekend, there's a couple marches. Plan to arrive early, prepare for overcrowding on buses, you know, ride light rail to Capitol Hill and walk to the park. That's a good idea as well. So just be prepared for that. You might want to leave early just uh, because there could be a lot of people out on the streets for those two uh, marches that are happening this weekend as we send it now to Jordan to see what the weather's going to be like for the big weekend, a holiday weekend for a lot of folks. Yeah, you know, some people are going to be traveling. Uh, I know that this system coming in tonight is bringing not only the rain, but we've got the wind threat. We've been talking about it the last 24 to 48 hours and then mountain snow. So no matter where you head, you're probably going to run into a couple of issues right now. I want to focus on rain because we've got moderate to heavy rain pushing right through the metro areas here locally, anywhere from Olympia all the way through Tacoma and up into Seattle. So that's going to be the yellows, the oranges, even the reds out there towards the Kitsap Peninsula coming over Elliott Bay there. We're seeing some good amount of rainfall uh, pushing through. And when you look at the time lapse, all right, it does look like it's moving from that southwest to northeast trajectory. So it'll just continue to swing up I-5 and I-405 eventually passing over places like Index. Uh, maybe you're going to be in the Everett area watching us. So this will be moving through your neck of the woods in the next several minutes to potentially the next hour or so, depending on where you're watching. So that will be pushing in. So far, the rain that's come with this batch of uh, showers has been just shy of the inch. And obviously the coast uh, where it originated from is where we're seeing the heaviest amounts. Bremerton at 35 hundred seven inch right now, but look at Olympia closing in on half of an inch. So everybody else will be tapping into some of that precipitation. The watches, warnings and advisories are on again, especially up and over the mountains, North Cascades, the snow winter weather advisory in effect, maybe up an additional 10 inches. They already picked up a foot up at Baker and then we've got the wind threat. All right, we're now including parts of Port Angeles and swim in on this. That south wind is going to be whipping around the area as we head into tonight and tomorrow. So let's just hope we don't get any power outages. We'll track the details further this upcoming weekend in just a bit.